What's going on guys? Welcome to episode 45. Obviously, some things have changed. Um, we're still not doing live broadcasts, but uh, let me catch you up to speed. Um, beard's gone, hair's gone. Um, you'll find out a little bit more about that. But let me get into what happened last week. Last week I went to Missouri, uh, had a recording session, um, had some job interviews and um, actually met with a church that I have already accepted uh, a worship leading position at in uh, Farmington, Missouri. This has been cooking for like two months and I've been holding off on saying anything um, because I wanted to see if things were going to transpire and come to fruition. And it seems like they are coming together. So, um, that's happening you guys will find out about that probably once I'm already there for a few months um, but anyway so that's what happened last week spent some time out there um, kind of putting things in order and actually did some house shopping which was kind of cool because you know that one of my goals for the end of this year uh, was to buy a house in 2017 so if we don't get it done in 2017 then we will definitely get it done in the very first part of 2018 which I am jazzed about um, so the beard had to come off because uh, next week uh, I'm working construction. I'll tell you about that uh, next week, and or I'll tell you that at the end of this video. I'll, I'll explain more about that. First, let's jump into this week's book, which is Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. <clears throat> I got my stuff a little bit more together. Uh, sorry for the orange drapes. I haven't had time to change them. I am uh, up in Ukiah, California right now I'm um, getting ready to start my week um, and uh, this is not a room but it is a storage <laughs> it's my brother's storage place and uh, the, the gig that I'm gonna be working is up here so I've makeshifted into a room which is actually better than I normally have uh, because I'm usually sleeping in my car anyway um, this was actually a super interesting book the whole concept is around marketing and branding right so um, a lot of the jobs that uh, I uh, interviewed for um, are branding management jobs. So I've just been brushing up on my branding, which is why I read Influence last week and why I am reading this book this week. And it was a nice refresher for me, um, reminding you that your brand needs to be a story. Um, and in that, in that story, in the brand, you need to tell a story right now. Uh, a company that does this really well is Anytime Fitness. Um, you know a couple things about the company already. One, they do fitness. Two, it's Anytime, so it's a 24-hour gym. Um, and that's just in the name, right? So the, the name itself tells a story. Story branding is kind of taking the concept of every brand needs to tell a story like The Matrix does, right? So. <clears throat> most brands position themselves as the hero which is a big mistake because the problem with each individual is we all think we are the hero right so if I'm the hero and I'm searching the internet and I see another hero like a brand oh I, I say to myself oh look another hero that's cool but I got to get back to my story right what some companies don't understand it is if they position themselves as a guide right um, every hero needs a guide uh, Neo has Morpheus Frodo has Gandalf um, you have a guide who leads you they're definitely not the main character but without them there is no journey and so good branding positions themselves as being the guide um, the book pointed out that David Ramsey uh, smart money manager if you guys don't know who that is you definitely need to check him out David Ramsey um, he does a very good job of positioning him positioning himself as a guide for people to be the heroes of their own story rather than being the hero of his story right um, so that was not a new concept for me but a nice refresher for me I'm tripping out because I look like my little brother with a bald head and uh, no beard uh, human beings, so let me jump into some of the quotes that I took down. Human beings take action when outside sources challenge them to do so. Human beings, for the most part, are very stagnant 
until we are put up against it, until a challenge is put in front of us, until some outside force causes us to take action. Um, I'll talk a little bit of, about this more. I mean, I'm just something I'm going through right now. Um, an outside force uh, that was out of my control um, moved on me to take drastic action in my life and uh, reorganize some things and change some things. Um, definitely, uh, this is a, that's what Project Double Down has been about this entire time. Um, so I think that reigns to be true. Uh, the next quote is, show the customer what it costs not to do business with you. Um, now, there's two sides to this. You don't want to do fear mongering, clearly. Um, I think we've all been in a sales situation where the salesperson is trying to use fear to get us to buy, which is never a good tactic. But for the most part, according to this book, the most research shows that most companies aren't really doing that. If anything, most companies aren't creating enough fear to begin with. So that's something to think about of what what will happen if you don't use this company. Um, <clears throat> that I use this tactic in the branding for Her Something Blue. Um, our tagline is from the moment she gets the ring, from the day she says, I do, no wedding, no wedding is complete without her something blue. Um, so basically we're insinuating that without us, you're not really having a wedding. Um, <clears throat> now without services, without great um, customer service and a great product, the catchphrase means nothing, right? But you do need to have some element of fear um, in your messaging or in your branding or it becomes passed on. Uh, us as consumers, I talked about this in the book Influence, um, even though we know branding is taking place and even though we know that we are being sold something, we tend not to do it unless those things are in place, even though we know they're happening. So um, that's, that's definitely something that popped out at me in this book. <clears throat> never assume your customer understands, oh, never assume your customer understands how your story brand will change their lives. Tell them how your story brand will change their lives. Um, this is probably something that I need to step up my game um, in some of my branding that I'm doing. I don't know if I'm stating clear enough in, uh, on my website for her something blue of how we are going to do that. I am stating that your wedding won't be complete without us, but what I'm not stating is how we are going to make that happen. Um, <clears throat> Oh, this was just a really good resource, mystorybrand.com. Uh, if you guys run your own business, you're into this, go check that out. It's a great resource um, and will help you along with this process of branding. Every story needs a villain. Your story is no different. Every person needs a villain in their story, a, a problem to solve. Um, one of the brands that they mentioned was a company that does like very quick Pilates workouts for uh, moms who have very busy schedules and the villain is the busy schedule. So their branding is we help, we help busy moms, um, we help busy moms get in shape and feel great, right? <clears throat> so the fear is there. Um, if you're not in shape, you're not going to feel great, right? And then the villain is there too, busy moms, right? What mom isn't busy? Um, so that was a great example of how all that kind of ties together. Uh, the guy needs to be clear about the invitation to action. So there has to be a clear invitation to action. It can't be vague at all. There's a, <clears throat> he uses a dating deal he talks about when he asked his wife out for the first time. Um, he said he had asked her, like he had kind of been trying to hint that he likes her. And he said there was no clear invitation to action. So he just hit her up and said, hey, I'm going to date you. I'm going to hit you up in 30 days. So be single then. 30 days from now, I'm going to ask you out. And they were really good friends and it was a little awkward. But he said it was the first time he did a clear, hey, this is an invitation. You're more than welcome to show up. I'll be here. Um, I, th I thought that was fantastic. Good for him. He's got a sack of cojones on him. Um, 
Number one desire from people or customers is gaining power and position, um, and it's the need for status. Uh, we all have the need for status. Uh, they, they use this is actually where Dave Ramsey's came up. He he positions the status as um, when you've paid off your mortgage, that is the new status. It's taking the place. I'm saying status very weird. Status. It's taking the place of uh, BMW, right? Um, and he's positioning himself in that way to take the place of that. Um, so that was another, that was like the number one desire. I think there was a list of five or six desires. Um, these were really great. I wrote down all of these. So uh, five things you can do to help grow your business that are free. One, create a one-liner. All right, you need a one-line sentence, elevator pitch. Hey, what do you do for work? Uh, this is something I've struggled with because I do so many different things for work that um, I don't have a great clear one-liner. Um, I typically say the product or the project that I'm working on currently, but what I really need to do is I need to lead with what I, what I do and can sell right now. <clears throat> Every single time it needs to be, I'm a musician, I do Christian contemporary music that does not sound like music you would hear in church. Um, and that, that needs to be my one-liner, right? So people are like, oh, Christian music that you don't normally hear in church, that's interesting, um, and at least opens the conversation for what I do. Two, create a lead generator and collect, and start collecting email addresses. I've already started doing this, um, and I'm jazzed about it. I'm a little nervous because I'm not gonna have a lot of time to do this in the next little bit, in a couple months, but um, I'm still gonna do my best to work on it. Uh, number five or number four um, collect and store wait no oh collect uh, stories of transformation right and tell those stories of transformation of, of people who's used your product and uh, it has helped them in some way shape or form you have to tell those stories uh, number five create a system that generates references or referrals uh, not references so you have to create a lead generating system. Um, this is something that I have not done. What I need to do is, if you have me play at your church, um, if you refer another church, I give you a 20% discount. Um, if you have me come speak at your school, if you refer another two schools, then I give you a 20%. You know, just something that to generate more leads and more and more bookings. That's something that I need to do. Um, <clears throat> I have not done hopefully uh, next year we can start hitting that a little harder so uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about what's gonna happen next week so uh, next week I don't know what book I'm gonna read I'm a little concerned about reading um, I will have an hour drive in the morning and an hour drive at night which gives me two hours each day to actually listen, which is far less than I normally get because I'm usually on the road uh, three or four hours a day. So my book consumption has to be less than 10 hours for the week for me to knock it all out. So I'm a little concerned. Um, <clears throat> I will be, next week I will be working construction. Um, I got hired on with the fires, the, the fire cleanup in Sonoma, and I'm going to do that. Uh, probably for two or three months before I make my move to Missouri. I'm scheduled to start uh, my worship job in January. We'll see if that happens. Um, <clears throat> and I have to make a couple trips out there to uh, set stuff up and um, and get everything ready for me to be out there and, and purchase my house and, and all the above. Crossing my fingers for that. So a couple things to bring up in this. Um, one, this isn't really what I wanted, um, clearly. Who wants to shave their beard? <clears throat> but this came about because um, I'm strapped for cash. Um, I can continue doing what I'm doing and getting by, but I won't be able to flourish. And um, it was a tough realization. I talked last week about um, the story uh, in The Alchemist where he has to he gets everything stolen from him and he has to spend um, a few years making money to get back home, right? And he decides 
uh, he decides when he's done working that he's not going to go home and he's going to continue chasing his his personal legend and, and chasing his dream. This is clearly not a quit for me. I've been up against it many times, and uh, this is literally a stop, make some stupid money real quick, and um, and then get back to making music. I'll still be recording. Um, I found an amazing studio in St. Louis that I love, Red Pill Studio. I love uh, Jake up there. is a great dude who I'm fully confident that he's going to take my music to the next level. Um, so that's good for you guys. You get to hear better stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, man, this is just a uh, this is just a pause for me. Um, I really have been praying for an opportunity to uh, to make some quick cash. And um, when this opportunity came up, it was it was a couple things. One, it's extremely humbling. Um, I have joked I have played I have had fun for the last three years and I've I've made jokes at my friends expenses for having full-time jobs and real jobs um, I've taken that for granted for sure and this uh, this is some humble pie that I'm having to eat to get back to where um, to where I'm handling my business and doing the things that I need to do um, one of the things that really hit me is um, it's very it's very unbiblical um, what I've been doing and I, I hate to get spiritual on you guys but it's not live so fast forward whatever um, but we're supposed to we're supposed to be working we're supposed to be um, tilling the land and don't get me wrong what I do is incredibly hard work this is gonna be the uh, I was talking to my brother earlier um, having a real job making money um, <laughs> I've never took it seriously because it's a joke. Um, and I, for anybody who has a real job, when I mean, you think about your job, is it really that difficult? You show up when they tell you to show up. You do the same thing every day. You know, you get really good at doing one thing, and um, and making money is a joke. I quit a job already where I was making stupid money. Um, this job that I'm about ready to take is stupid money. This when I quit this job. It'll be the second six-figure six job that I quit, and I'll have a grin on my face when I do it. Um, making money is, is so easy to do, and I don't understand why we attach value to it and why we think that that gives us status when, I mean, it, this has been a somber time for me. Um, part of the reason I shaved my head and shaved my, well, I shaved my beard because I have to wear a ventilator mask. Uh, the whole place is a hazmat scene. But part of the reason I shaved my head is, um, for me, this is this is not my purpose. This is not what I'm put here to do. I'm happy to do this to make some money, and I think uh, I really feel like God put me in this position to give me a little humble pie and realize how blessed I am to do what I do um, for work. <clears throat> Two, I'm probably I'm probably a good thirty-five grand in debt from all the projects that I have going which I could get out of debt if I continued doing what I'm doing. I'd be out of debt, no problem, in about two years. And I'd be set up pretty solid. Um, this opportunity that he gave me, I will be out of debt in a couple months. And uh, I'll have some money aside to put on a down payment for a house. Um, it's hazard pay, so it's, it's, it's a ridiculous opportunity. And, and I have to do like 12 hour days, seven days a week for a couple months, but, um, so that's why I'm a little concerned about my book reading. Uh, but it is an opportunity to capitalize um, where I didn't capitalize with my last job. You know, when I knew I wanted to do this, when I knew I wanted to leave and do music and do books and, and do my own thing, I just left my job. I didn't, uh, I didn't put away money. And if you guys have followed Dispersing the Cloud this last year of me reading books and growing in my business and all the above, if you followed it, you've heard me say that a couple times. Like, man, if I could go back and do it again, I would save a little cash and do it this way. That way I didn't have to take out loans and all the above. Um, this is God's way of giving me a nice little layup uh, to where I can take a little break. I can refocus, reassess some things. Um, get square get even and then start my full-time job in Missouri as a uh, as a worship leader and and um, 
and get back to doing music on the side and books on the side and everything else on the side like I talked about in the last couple of videos of, of doubling down on my income um, this is a huge huge opportunity for me and it came at a time uh, at a very tumultuous time in my life where emotionally I was not ready for this uh, this has been a very very difficult week <laughs> uh, this has been a very very difficult two and a half months uh, for me and so part of my shaved head is part of my mourning process of just trying to erase um, a little bit of uh, a little bit of hurt for what I'm having to go through and um, get back to <laughs> it's funny I I grew the beard to yeah, I'm a very vain person I grew the beard to erase vanity um, from my life and the beard turned into vanity so um, this is as close as I can get to being in vain right now. Unfortunately, I'm incredibly good looking. No matter what I do to my face, it stays beautiful. So, <laughs> I'm stuck. Uh, but on a very serious note, um, I want to leave you guys with this. This is, this is the best quote from the book. And I think it rings true in branding. It rings true in business. It rings true in life. Failure is like salt. If you use too much, it ruins the recipe. But if you leave salt out of the recipe, it will leave it very, very bland. Your story needs failure. Um, failure makes it epic. If you didn't have failure, nobody would want to watch and nobody would want to hear about it. So as I'm taking my social media break, again, you guys aren't going to see this for a few months. Um, shoot, I might even have hair again when you see me next. Uh, when I come back live, but um, as you're watching these videos and you're catching up with me and what I've been doing, understand that um, in everything that we do, we are taken through hills and we are taken through valleys. And uh, there's a great song um, that says, when I'm standing on the mountaintop, uh, I will give praise to the one who put me there. And when I'm walking through the valley, I will give praise to the one who sees me there. So. Through the times that I've had, I mean, through this last three years, I've had some amazing hills. I've done some amazing things, and I've had some very, very big, big, big wins. And um, right now I'm going through a really rough valley, but I know that God still sees me, and, um, and it ain't over <laughs> till it's over. So I will talk to you guys soon. Uh, next week. I'm hoping to get a book done. I'm going to try to find one that's relatively short so I can knock it out on my drives. Uh, but I will try to have something for you. And I will try to have a better backdrop than this because orange ain't going to fly. It makes my face look orange. It looks like the room's on fire. It's just, it's depressing. We're going to get something better. Maybe I can get some better lighting in here too. Uh, I'll do what I can. I'll talk to you guys soon.